I rise today in strong support of H.R. 1615, the Gas Stove Protection and Freedom Act. I want to thank my friend and fellow Energy and Commerce member, Representative Kelly Armstrong, for his leadership and continued work on this initiative. As I said in our full committee markup last month, the American people have had enough of Washington bureaucrats and Biden administration officials, our big brother, dictating every aspect of their lives from the, time, uh, the type of car you drive to what appliance you can use in the kitchen. Back in January, we heard disturbing reports from one of the commissioners at the Consumer Protection Safety Commission that a nationwide universal ban on gas stoves was on the table. This type of government overreach would be an assault on Americans' individual consumer freedoms to decide what works best for their own households and budgets. Republicans stand with the American people who overwhelmingly agree that banning gas stoves altogether is an egregious overreach and government knows best ideology at its worst. The Gas Stove Protection and Freedom Act will prohibit the CPC, the CPSC, from using federal dollars to regulate or issue enforcement regulations on gas stoves as a banned product and prevent regulations that prohibit the sale or substantially increase the price of gas stoves while still allowing CPSC to protect consumers in the way that Congress envisioned. Sadly, the Biden administration's Green New Deal agenda has fueled the flames of radical left state and local governments, and many have already enacted their own complete gas stove bans, such as New York and some cities in California. In fact, many of these cities are facing their own battles, such as in Berkeley, California, the first city to enact a ban in 2019, where their law was recently struck down by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. And in Palo Alto, California, where they enacted a ban but admitted to issuing an exemption for celebrity chef Jose Andres, who argued traditional gas appliances were necessary to achieve their signature complex flavors. This carve-out from the far left is plain hypocrisy hypocrisy. Many, meanwhile, down in my state of Florida, we just entered hurricane season, and households who are struggling after a natural disaster takes out their electricity and would find it even harder to cook their food without a gas stove. All these reasons clearly demonstrate why this legislation is needed to prevent government overreach. I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 1615. Let's pass this common sense, bipartisan legislation that supports American consumer choice and freedom for households to decide what works best for their own lives. Makes sense, Mr. Chairman. I reserve the balance of my time. Thank you. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Massachusetts recognized. This New Jersey, sorry. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Mr. Speaker, I rise to speak in strong opposition to H.R. 1615. This bill is an attempt to deliberately mislead the American people into thinking that they are at risk of losing their gas stoves. Now, let me be emphatically clear. The Consumer Product Safety Commission is not banning gas stoves. The idea that anyone is coming into American homes to remove gas stoves is ridiculous. They are not banning gas stoves. But these facts have not stopped supporters of this bill from touting this false narrative to scare consumers and proposing legislation like this bill that will have detrimental impacts on our constituents' health and safety. By limiting the tools that the CPSC can use to protect consumers, H.R. 1615 puts politics over people and consumer safety. It puts slogans over science-based policy decision making. The CPSC is an independent federal agency with a long history of identifying, protecting children and adults from a wide range of products that are hazardous or that pose a risk of serious injury or death. 
The CPSC carries out its mission in numerous ways. It investigates safety allegation and recalls dangerous products to keep them off the market. It also works with industry to develop voluntary product safety standards, and it issues and enforces standards for hazardous products so that it can assure, ensure that these products are not dangerous for consumers. Now, in recent years, the CPSC has removed hazardous infant sleeping products. It has adopted corded window coverings to protect children from strangulation, and it has worked with industry to reduce the risk of fires from, ho from hoverboards and scooters. The CPSC's work saves lives by protecting consumers, in many instances children, from dangerous products. But H.R. 1615 will prevent the CPSC from doing its job. Last December, the agency issued a recall of a gas stove product that was found to be a serious risk of injury or death from carbon monoxide poisoning. The agency was doing its job in recalling a dangerous product. But H.R. 1615 would prohibit the agency from using its rulemaking authority to ban such hazardous products which could endanger the lives of any American who has that dangerous product in their home. I mean, if you think about this, what you're basically saying is that this agency that protects our safety and health is just basically going to be emasculated and can't do its job. What possible help is that? Why would you do such a thing? Each and every American benefits from the work done by the CPSC, and it would be unconscionable to weaken the Commission's authority. And so this bill sets, in my opinion, a dangerous precedent, Mr. Speaker, of stifling scientific investigation into health hazards and limiting the agency's authority to keep our children safe. Instead of taking actions to limit the agency's authority, we should encourage their work to explore allegations that consumer products put our children's health and safety at risk. We should give the agency all the tools that they need, not eliminate the tools they currently have to address health and safety risk as, as they arise. So I urge my colleagues to vote no on H.R. 1615. We must protect the authority of the Consumer Product Safety Commission to protect the health and safety of all Americans, but particularly our children. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from New Jersey reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I yield three minutes to the gentlelady, the distinguished gentlelady from Washington, uh, our chairperson, Ms. McMorris Rogers. Thank you. Appreciate the gentleman yielding, and I rise in support of H.R. 1615. The Gas Stove Protection and Freedom Act is led by my friend Congressman Kelly Armstrong from North Dakota. It has bipartisan support here in the House and is a companion to Sen Senators Cruz and Manchin's bipartisan legislation in the Senate. It will stop efforts by the Consumer Product Safety Commission that could result in an outright ban or substantial price increase and the cost of gas stoves, while also allowing the Commission to continue its important safety work for these appliances. Commissioner Trumpka suggested that the CPSC should consider a ban on gas stoves. He said, quote, everything is on the table. As Fox News reported last week, his efforts go back even further than previously reported and include the Biden administration coordinating last summer with an environmental activist on the legal rationale to ban stoves. To justify a ban, Mr. Trumpka has also cited a study by Rocky Mountain Institute, which has partnered with the Chinese government and is pushing America away from reliable and affordable energy. We must stop this agenda and make sure people have access to affordable appliances like gas stoves. And we aren't alone in raising the alarm that this effort to ban stoves goes too far. In fact, in, in California, a celebrity chef was recently given an exemption by local Democrats so he wouldn't have to comply with Palo Alto's natural gas stove ban in his new restaurant. Surely, we can all agree today to allow every hardworking person in this country, regardless of their income or celebrity status, to have the same freedom to decide for themselves what stove is in their kitchen. Again, H.R. 1615 allows the CPSC to continue their important safety work, but it stops the administration from implementing a political agenda, completely divorced from reality, to ban an, uh, an appliance that is preferred by 40% of American households. 
I thank Congressman Armstrong for his leadership, and I urge strong bipartisan support on H.R. 1615. I yield back. Thank you. Uh, I reserve. The gentleman from Florida reserves. The gentleman from New Jersey rec is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will yield um, the ranking member of our Innovation, Data, and Commerce Subcommittee, Ms. Schakowsky from Illinois, uh, such time as she may consume. The gentlewoman is recognized. Thank I thank the gentleman for yielding, and I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I, I want to say to uh, my friend, uh, Congressman Bill Arrakis, and Kathy Rogers, um, I consider you uh, friends of mine, but I just don't quite understand the uh, energy and hysteria almost in places about gas stoves. No one is taking away your gas stove. I want to make that very clear. That is not the intention of this legislation. I am the owner of a gas stove. Um, I decided um, a long time ago that uh, I really preferred gas stoves. I have a fairly new um, gas stove. But that doesn't mean that I don't want the very agency of government that I have worked with, and uh, uh, Congressman Pallone talked about the successes of saving people from hazards, that's all, or reminding people or alerting people about hazards. Um, I own a, 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 a new car. It's actually a, a Chevy Bolt. It's all electric. But like all the other cars I, that I have bought, I want to know about its safety history, all the things I can know. And the other thing about a car, if something goes wrong, I think there's going to be a recall. So I will have an opportunity to deal with this. The Consumer Product Safety Commission wants to take a look at what may be a hazard. And if there are threats to our children's health, to our families, if it could cause real problems, why don't we want to know about those? And so I think that this legislation takes away the opportunity of us to find out about what may in, be, may, may in fact be a hazard, may require some changes in the gas stoves and the way they're manufactured. Why wouldn't we want to know that rather than subject our families, our children, our communities which, with something that could harm them? This prevents information. I want to say to you, get your head out of the gas stove and let's let the facts be told so that we can make decis decisions as, as smart adults to be able to decide whether or not we want to buy them. And finally, whether or not we need to ha see some changes. So with that, uh, I, uh, in opposition to this bill, I yield back. The gentleman from New Jersey Reserves, the gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield four minutes uh, to the Vice Chairman of the Energy and Commerce Committee, the gentleman from North Dakota, Mr. Armstrong. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. H.R. 1615, uh, the Gas Stove Protection and Freedom Act, would prohibit funding to the Consumer Product Safety Commission for only two purposes. First, to regulate gas stoves as a banned hazardous product, and second, to impose any consumer product safety standard on gas stoves that would result in a prohibition on the use or sale of the appliances or otherwise substantially increase the average price. Simply put, this bill prevents the commission from banning the entire product category of gas stoves. This bill does not prevent the commission from its statutory mission to address specific models of gas stoves or any other product that may pose an actual safety hazard. We are debating this bill because Commissioner Richard Trumka has made repeated statements that the Commission would consider substantial regulatory actions on gas stoves categorically. His comments include a December 2022 statement advocating for a ban on gas stoves. The chair of the Commission has walked back Commissioner Trumka's impulsive statements by declaring, I am not looking to ban gas stoves. However, 
Despite the chairman's cleanup statement, the commission has since issued a March 1st request for inf information that included repeated mentions of toxic emissions and chronic hazards regarding gas stoves. We all agree that consumer product and safety is important. Yet, it is apparent that the underlying motivation behind this veiled consumer safety play is a green climate agenda with the goal to further restrict natural gas. 20 congressional Democrats sent a letter to the commission in December 2022 that first mentioned the equivalent climate impact of regulating gas stoves before addressing the merits of any health concerns. And let's discuss the alleged health concerns. First, multiple studies claiming that gas stoves create harmful indoor emission levels have been criticized for inaccurate conclusions and testing that failed to simulate real-world conditions. Some of those studies measured indoor emissions in an area enclosed in a plastic tarp without any ventilation. There are no studies establishing a causal relationship between cooking with gas stoves and asthma. Studies of actual homes under real life conditions found that nitrogen dioxide levels were below the standard EPA considers harmful to health. Further, other cooking related and non cooking related emissions factors have a meaningful effect on indoor emissions. These factors, such as the chemical makeup of food and oils, cooking temperature, cooking methods, food surface to mass index, the use of exhaust and ventilation, and burning of tobacco, candles, and incense. Again, all of this is secondary because we know the motivation of the CPSC and throughout the, this entire administration is a green climate push. The goal is to dictate how you live every aspect of your life, how you save and invest for the future by pushing ESG, how you drive by banning gas-powered cars, and now the goal is to control how you cook and literally breathe inside your home. I am confident in stating that the vast majority of North Dakotans don't want the federal government telling them how to live their life, particularly in their own home. And to my Democratic colleagues, if you agree with the chair of the commission and don't want to bask in gas stoves for over 187,000 million Americans, vote for the bill. If you agree with Commissioner Trunkwa that the federal government should take away every gas stove in the country, oppose the bill. Yet before you oppose the board, make sure you have a good answer to why your constituents can't cook the way they want and be prepared to defend it. I urge everyone to vote in favor of H.R. 1615 so we at least can end the Commission's misguided foyer into the kitchens of every American. And with that, I yield back. The gentleman from Florida I reserve, reserves. I reserve, Mr. Chairman. I reserve. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. Uh, I listened to my colleague from North Carolina, who I respect, I mean North Dakota, who I respect a great deal, but, you know, I. He specifically said that this, and I, I wrote it down, that this legislation um, would prohibit the Consumer Product Safety Commission from reg regulating gas stoves as a hazardous product. Now, you listen to my colleague from Illinois, Ms. Schakowsky, who said that from a practical point of view, how does that make sense? We, this is the agency that's charged with basically looking at these products to see if they're hazardous, if they're unsafe for kids, if they're going to, you know, cause serious inju inju injury or death. Now, one person, one commissioner, has made some statements suggesting that he might be interested in banning gas stoves. I don't know all the details, but I understand that there was uh, one commissioner that keeps uh, being quoted. Um, First of all, this commission has five members. There's one who has, a, there's one vacancy. Because one commissioner says that uh, and doesn't have the power to uh, effectuate it because he's only one person, um, you're then gonna tell me that we should now take this sort of hatchet approach or severe approach of saying, well then, because one commissioner thinks that, then therefore we should say that this uh, commission uh, cannot regulate gas stoves as a, as a hazardous product. I mean, I, frankly, that's like cutting off your leg because you, know, you decide that uh, there's some threat or something. I, I, it makes no sense to me. We have um, the chairman of the commission, who actually used to work for the Energy and Commerce Committee, Chairman Hone uh, Sarek. Uh, he has been crystal clear and has stated publicly that the Consumer Product Safety Commission is not conducting a rulemaking to ban gas stoves. Now, you know, I'll use the analogy as a member of Congress. I'm one out of, what, 435? I don't have the authority to say 
that because I want something done, that that's what's going to happen, right? Or even if there were 10 or 20 of us that said that. So as a single member of Congress, I don't have the unilateral authority to decide what action the House of Representatives is going to take. By the same token, one single member of the CPSC does not set, get to decide what action that body will take, and suggesting otherwise is just not accurate. But even if that, even if, you know, even if he said that, and I believe he said that he might want to ban them, why would you then say, okay, well now that we're going to put a, a pox on the whole commission and say that they don't have the authority to look at hazards and tell me whether or not certain stoves would be dangerous? I mean, I just think it's, you know, it's just a, a, a really, uh, um, uh, you know, very much con contrary to protection of people's health and safety to take this kind of action just because one member of the commission suggested it. But that's what you do. So I, I again, I, I would urge, let's be practical about this, and let's not, and let's not, you know, just take a hatchet to this commission and this agency that over the years has protected it in so many ways with faulty products. Uh, and with that, I, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from New Jersey reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Mr. Chairman, I yield three minutes uh, to the gentleman from Ohio, my good friend, Mr. Johnson. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong support of H.R. 1615. I got an article here. It's entitled, California, Cities, California City Gives Celebrity Chef Jose Andres an Exemption for His Restaurant to Use Gas Stoves. Well, of course they did, but let's look how this happened. Now, it was reported that while the progressive city of Palo Alto, California, has a natural gas ban for all new buildings and renovations, a policy that Democrats are trying to enact all over the country. We find that the ban actually doesn't apply to everybody. Mr. Andre's lawyers in front of the city council argued that he could not possibly cook with the efficiency and precision he desires if forced to use electric stoves. The city council agreed and gave him a one-off only for him exemption to the rule not for small family-owned restaurants, not for working class residents, no one else, just him. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Mr. Andres, he's a wealthy, well-connected celebrity chef, very popular here inside the Washington Beltway, not only for his great restaurants, but also for his left-wing activism on the border, climate change, and other liberal causes. I think you all get the picture here. And to be fair, I actually totally agree with Mr. Andres, it's true that gas stoves are not only more efficient, but also perform in a way that many Americans and restaurant owners prefer. All that we ask and what this legislation before us would do is give the American people that same economic freedom and choice. The choice to use appliances that they actually want and can afford. If we don't act, if we don't pass legislation like this, the Biden administration will continue on its path to take this onerous policy prescription nationwide. And to add insult to injury, this celebrity chef and his wealthy, powerful National Democrat friends who aren't giving up their gas stoves, their fossil fuel fired stoves, these are the same exact people lecturing my constituents about climate change. They say that it's an Appalachian Ohioans and working class families all over the country who need to give up their cars their stoves and their furnaces to avert the climate crisis. This is madness. It's hypocrisy. Mr. Speaker, any American, regardless of whether or not they're a wealthy, politically connected coastal elite, should be able to cook on a gas stove if they choose to. I urge my colleagues to support this measure. Thank you, and I yield back. The gentleman from Florida Reserves, the gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself such time as I consume. Look, I don't know about these celebrity stoves, Hollywood. I mean, you can bring up all this if you want. But the bottom line is this legislation doesn't guarantee that anybody gets to use their gas stove. I mean, if a town in California or a state wants to prohibit it, they're still free to do so. So let's not give the impression that somehow this legislation is going to prohibit towns or states or any kind of municipality uh, from prohibiting gas stoves if they want to do so. What this legislation says is that a agency that's basically told by Congress to protect us from hazardous 
uh, uh, utilities, hazardous uh, equipment, hazardous uh, uh, activity is going to be hamstrum, so they can't protect us. That's all you're doing here. And, and, and let's be honest, you're not doing anything else. And I think it's, uh, it's outrageous to say that, you know, if this agency finds out that there's something that's going to kill kids or cause them to be poisoned, that they can't do their job. I uh, reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from New Jersey reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield two minutes to the gentleman from Pennsylvania, a very effective member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, Mr. Joyce. Dr. Joyce. Excuse me. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Speaker, at a time when rolling blackouts have become more common, and as it has become clear that green energy tools like wind turbines and solar panels cannot meet our energy needs, the Biden administration has taken yet another step to limit the ability of Americans to use natural gas in their homes. The weaponization of government against our energy, our energy industry only serves to make our energy future less secure. This legislation is about ensuring that American families have access to the products and the energy resources that they need and that they want. Currently, natural gas stoves are the preferred cooktop appliance of nearly 40 percent of American homes. We know that natural gas is safe, it's reliable, it's affordable energy, and it's a source for millions of Americans. The Gas Stove Protection and Freedom Act is a step toward getting the federal regulations out of homes and out of businesses. Any attempt to say that the Biden administration's actions are based in public safety is not supported by the data that we have at hand. According to the National Fire Protection Association, electric ranges were more than two and a half times likely to cause a home fire than gas stoves. Let me repeat that. Electric ranges more than two and a half times likely to cause a fire than gas stoves. We know that gas stoves are safe, and we cannot allow the Biden administration to strip away consumer choice simply to fulfill green energy agenda. I urge all of my colleagues to support H.R. 1615, and I yield the balance of my time. The gentleman from Florida reserves. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. I'll continue to reserve, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I yield two minutes to the gentleman from New York, Mr. Lawler. Thank you, Mr. Recognized. Speaker. I rise today in strong support of H.R. 1615, the Gas Stove Protection and Freedom Act. This bipartisan legislation is pragmatic policymaking, one that safeguards the availability, use, and affordability of gas stoves. By placing restrictions on the actions of the Consumer Product Safety Commission, an important federal regulatory agency, this act will help preserve access tr to traditional gas stoves for all Americans. Now, why is this important? Because the government should not be in the habit of restricting consumer choice or access to appliances that are integral to our everyday lives. Now, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle will stand here and say till they're blue in the face that they don't want to ban gas stoves and that it's ridiculous that anyone would dare claim that it's happening. But the fact is they're already doing it in New York State. Most new construction starting in 2026 will ban gas stoves. That was put in the state budget just two months ago. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, nearly 62 percent of households in New York State have a natural gas cooking appliance. A potential efficiency standard can be financially detrimental to millions of New Yorkers. Now, if you look at the sign, it's talking about 23 hours more that uh, Americans will have to use per year boiling water under this potential regulation. Guess what? 70 percent of electricity is generated by natural gas. You'll be using more natural gas, not less. And over the past two decades, natural gas has reduced carbon emissions by 60 percent greater than renewables. In California, they tried the same thing and had it summarily thrown out of court due to the absolute absurdity of this effort. Again, we can and should build a diverse energy grid. We agree with that. 
but it's got to be based on science and facts, not pie-in-the-sky ideas. We simply cannot outright ban sources of energy and appliances that millions of Americans rely on. In short, the Gas Stove Protection and Freedom Act is prudent legislation, one that values consumer choice and maintains the availability of essential household appliances. I urge all of my colleagues to join me in supporting this significant and sensible bipartisan effort. I yield I'm back, inspired. Mr. Chairman. I reserve. The gentleman from Florida reserves. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Uh, I yield myself so, such time as I may consume. Uh, again, the gentleman keeps saying that, um, that this administration is banning gas stoves. That is simply not the case. Uh, plus, he's talking about efficiency standards. This legislation is not about efficiency standards. This legislation is about saying that the Consumer Product Safety Commission cannot research and make decisions about hazards and whether something, whether a particular gas stove is hazardous to people's health or might explode. It's not about efficiency standards. And certainly, we're not talking about saying that you have to move towards uh, an, an electric stove as opposed to a gas stove. I mean, I just, it just bothers me, Mr. Speaker, that the other side continues to talk about banning gas stoves, about moving towards electric stoves, um, about efficiency standards. This is not what this bill is about. This is not what the Consumer Product Safety Commission is about. So, again, I, I would urge opposition because the gentleman is not talking about this legislation. The gentleman from New Jersey reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield two minutes to the gentleman from a great good friend of mine, the gentleman from Texas, a very effective member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, Mr. Fluger. The gentleman is recognized. Well, thank you. Um, to my friend from Florida, Mr. Speaker, uh, it's almost hard to believe that we're actually having to have this discussion, but in a time where Americans are struggling to afford groceries, the Biden administration is trying to implement new rules to dictate what you have in your house, what kind of appliances you have in your home. And as my friend from New York just stood up and said, this is not just a Texas issue. This is not, you know, localized to one part of our country. This, this spans the entire country. We've seen the EPA overreach in every single aspect of energy, every single aspect whether it's with endangered species, the threat of an implementation uh, of non-attainment in the Permian Basin where I represent, they're overreaching. And their de facto ban on gas stoves would eliminate more than half of the gas cooktops on the market today while forcing 187 million Americans who use affordable, reliable natural gas to switch to expensive, less desirable alternatives. If this administration was serious about limiting pollution and protecting our climate, they would unleash the energy that we produce in my district in the Permian Basin. They would put Midland over Moscow. They would do things to make it easier to produce clean energy, 40% cleaner natural gas in the U.S. compared to Russia. In fact, homes with natural gas appliances emit 22% less CO2 than all electric homes. House Republicans are not just standing by idly. We're going to do something. We are doing something. We're going to prevent this overreach from happening. Mr. President, unleash American energy. Don't make it harder to produce natural gas here. Don't limit the types of stoves and appliances we have in our homes. Quit overreaching. Allow Americans the freedoms that our Constitution protects and pass this bill. Our bill will prevent the administration from banning gas stoves or cooktops or imposing any standards that make gas stoves unaffordable. And I appreciate the leadership throughout this House from the Speaker and everyone else to bring this bill to bear. I urge a yes vote. I yield back. I'm inspired. Members are reminded to direct their remarks to the chair. The gentleman from Florida Reserves, the gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Thank you. Um, I yield myself such time, such time as I may consume. Again, I have to speak out against the misinformation that's being promulgated on the other side. It is simply wrong to argue, as the previous speaker did, that genuine concerns about the health effects of gas stove emissions is in any way tied to President Biden's clean energy agenda. 
The Consumer Product Safety Commission is an independent federal agency. It's tasked solely, and I say solely, with protecting consumers, and especially children, from consumer products that pose an unreasonable risk of injury or death. The work of the Consumer Product Safety Commission has nothing to do with the Biden administration's clean energy policies, whether you agree with his policies or not. And we shouldn't let Republicans' fear of protecting our environment uh, baselessly restrict CPS's tools to protect America's children and their families' health and safety. You know, I could just read the bill that, you know, Mr. Armstrong, the gentleman from North Dakota, said before, that this bill says that the commission cannot regulate gas stoves as a hazardous product or to impose or enforce any consumer uh, product safety net standard on gas stoves. It has nothing to do with the environment. It's all about safety. So why do you talk about these other things? I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from New Jersey reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I yield two minutes to a great American hero, my fellow Floridian, Mr. Mass. The gentleman is recognized. I thank my friend for yielding me the time. I'm not going to need two minutes, so you can calculate for that right now. I'm just going to give a quick warning, because with this administration, it is always an example of getting the camel's nose under the tent. We're dealing with gas stoves today, and here's my prediction today. Give it a couple months, and they're going to be coming after everybody's backyard grills. They're going to be coming after your 4th of July. They're going to be coming after you saying, well, this is what it does. If you go out there and you put burgers and dogs on your gas grill in your backyard on Memorial Day and Labor Day and 4th of July, that's my prediction today. Mr. Chairman, that's really all the time that I needed was to say this is how this administration is constantly working against the American people, and I expect this to be no different. I yield my time back. The gentleman from I Florida reserve. reserves. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. I just continue to reserve, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman Thank reserves. You. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. I, I just want to tell you uh, again, Mr. Chairman, um, that uh, I think that the, the uh, Democrat Party has an agenda. I really do. Uh, and it's the Green New Deal. And I think this is what this is all about. So uh, I know how many people love their gas stoves. They love their gas stoves. They switch from electric stove to gas stove for a reason. Now, as a matter of fact, we have a gas stove. And, uh, and we've had it for years. And uh, I know my family is very pleased. And it is true. It is true that the, the, the food tastes better, particularly the Greek food, tastes a lot better with a gas stove. So uh, again, uh, I, I'm very much in support of this bill. And I know we're going to get bipartisan support. Thank you. I'm not so. Gentleman Neal. Steve's not here. I'll reserve, Mr. Uh, Mr. The gentleman Chairman. reserves. The gentleman from Florida, is, or New Jersey, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Is the gentleman closing or prepared to close? Because I have no additional speakers at this time. I think we've got one more. We have one more, uh, Mr. Speaker. I mean, Mr. Oh, then I'll uh, continue. Chairman. I, we have one more. I'll continue to reserve. Okay. The gentleman from New Jersey reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Yeah, uh, I'll reserve as well. Steve's coming right now. Steve's coming right now. Okay. Go ahead. I'll, uh, I'll yield. Uh, Two minutes, two minutes to the sponsor of the bill, Mr. Armstrong. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, you know, the minor, minority views and the committee report states that this bill restricts the commission from protecting consumers and produce, performing its traditional functions, such as safety research, working with industry to develop standards, and recalling unsafe products. But none of those claims are true. The bill does not prevent the commission from engaging in any of those functions. The bill simply prohibits the commission from banning gas stoves as an entire product category by either imposing a direct ban on a hazardous product or imposing safety standards in a manner that would substantially increase, increase the price of gas stoves. Nothing in the bill prohibits the commission from conducting research on gas stoves. Nothing in the bill prohibits the commission from developing voluntary safety standards with the industry. 
Nothing in the bill prohibits the commission from seeking to have a product declared an imminently ha hazardous consumer product, which allows the commission to seek a public notice, recall, repair, replacement, or refund for consumers. This bill is about ensuring Americans have continued access to the entire product category of gas stoves. It does not in any way limit the commission's ability to address a defective or dangerous model, or any attempt to suggest otherwise is inaccurate. And I think that's the important part of what we're talking about here. You can, the commission can still do its function, but it has to stay in its lane. We have plenty of different agencies in the Biden administration that want to push their Green New Deal agenda on Americans. You have the EPA, Department of Energy, Department of Defense, FTC. <laughs> I mean, the list goes on and on. But can we at least let the Consumer Products and Safety Commission stay within their lanes, do their mission, deal with faulty products, deal with recalls, make sure that the product is safe, not, at, not, at, not pushing forward an agenda that would take something away that millions and millions of Americans use every single day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And with that, I yield back. The gentleman from Florida I reserve. is, is reserved. Uh, the gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. I yield myself such time as I may consume. I have to uh, very much disagree with what the sponsor, uh, Mr. Armstrong, just said. Uh, I read uh, the section three uh, to say that the Consumer Product Safety Commission, and I quote, would not, would not be able to impose or enforce any consumer product safety standard or rule on gas stoves under such sections that would otherwise result in a prohibition on the use or sale of gas stoves. Now, I mean, I guess he could argue that, um, you know, that, that, that doesn't say that they can't uh, uh, adopt a safety standard, but the way this is written, it's quite clear that if they adopt a safety standard that has any possibility of leading uh, to a banning of some type of gas stove, uh, that they wouldn't be allowed to do it. So you're really putting a straitjacket on the commission by saying that, you know, if you do research or you do any kind of rulemaking or standard that says that this is hazardous, because that could ultimately lead to a particular type of gas stove being banned, uh, then you're not allowed to do it. So uh, I understand what he's saying, but I disagree. I think that the way this rule reads, if I were the chairman of the commission, I would be I would read this to say that I can't do research, I can't adopt a standard, I can't adopt anything that would impose uh, a safety standard because if I do that, then it might lead somehow to the banning of the gas stove. So, you know, I, I understand, <laughs> I think he's kind of being a little cute and loose with this by suggesting that all, that this just says they can't outright ban stoves. It says they can't adopt a safety standard. But with that, I'll reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from New Jersey reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield one minute to our distinguished majority leader, Mr. Scalise, from the great state of Louisiana. The gentleman is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I thank my friend, Mr. Bill Arrakis, uh, for yielding. And I rise in strong support of this bill. Mr. Armstrong brings forward a really important bill that follows with a number of other pieces of legislation you're seeing on the floor. You, you're seeing tomorrow, uh, Ms. Lesko's bill, dealing with the same issue, the idea that the federal government wants to ban gas stoves. I think most Americans, Mr. Chairman, are looking all across the country saying, okay, inflation is still skyrocketing for families. Energy costs are skyrocketing for families. You're paying 50% more at the pump when you fill up your car. By the way, they want to ban the combustion engine, not through a congressional act, but through unelected bureaucrat regulations to get rid of gasoline-powered cars. It's all part of this government control agenda that we're seeing from this administration. The Biden administration, it seems like every single department, it's CFPB here, it's Department of Energy over there, it's EPA in another place, trying to tell people what they can and can't do with their lives. What kind of stove you can use in your house? For goodness sake. I mean, the gas stove, First of all, if you just look at the premise of what they're trying to do, to ban the gas stove, which means you have to then use an electric stove, maybe a coal stove they would support, I don't know. Uh, but if you, let's say, are choosing between a gas stove and electric stove, we already know the gas stove is cheaper. So they're targeting lower income families and raising the costs on lower income families, taking money out of the families, the pockets of families who can least afford it. 
But then if you look at the energy side of this, and I know this administration more than any I've ever seen has issued an all out assault on American energy, not all energy. President Biden didn't cancel every pipeline. He canceled the Keystone pipeline and American pipelines, but he green lighted Russia's pipeline. He didn't cancel all fossil fuels in America or around the world. He said he just wants to make it harder to produce fossil fuels in the United States of America, but then he went and begged Putin to produce more oil. He went and begged Saudi to produce more oil, Venezuela. So it just seems like over and over again, it's American energy that they go after. But if you get rid of the gas stove, you're not getting rid of natural gas. Most places, a lot of places get their electricity from natural gas. So you're going to ban the gas stove, and then you're going to take your electric stove, you don't plug it into a tree, you plug it into a socket that's probably fueled by natural gas. What an irony, but, but don't worry, they're going to probably try to ban that too. Who are the people that come up with these ideas that are sitting around in a room not trying to figure out how to lower inflation, not trying to figure out how to get spending under control, not trying to figure out how to secure America's border. They're trying to figure out how to take the choices away from Americans whether or not you can even buy a gas stove. They're trying to take away the Second Amendment rights of disabled veterans on a bill we'll be voting on later tonight. On pistol braces, something that was designed for military veterans who risk in their lives for our country got so injured that their arms weren't able to use and hold a weapon like most people do. So they came up with these braces to help them exercise their Second Amendment constitutional rights. They wanna get rid of that too and make felons retroactively out of millions of Americans. This government control is out of control, Mr. Chairman, and it's about time we've pushed back. You're seeing this week, this whole week we're bringing bills, as we have in the past, to finally start standing up for those hardworking families who are struggling and are sick and tired of attacks on their freedom and their opportunity by this federal government. Today it's gas stoves. A couple of weeks ago, EPA starts coming up with rules that they haven't even finalized yet to try to ban the combustion engine. If you want to do these things, these are major, major changes that will affect people's lives adversely. I used to watch how a bill becomes law. I think most Americans watch that too. Hopefully they still teach civics in school instead of hatred of America, which they seem to want to do all the time. But it used to be that if you wanted to change the way something works, you file a bill. You go talk to your member of Congress, and you file a bill. You go to committee. You explain your idea. If it's a really dumb, nutty idea, it gets voted down. Well, I guess they got voted down so many times they decided, why go run for Congress? They just got into the unelected bureaucracy where they can just come up with these ideas, and there's no accountability, which, by the way, is why we're bringing the RAINS Act later this week, a bill that says any kind of change from an unelected bureaucrat that affects your life these hardworking families who are sick and tired of waking up going, what did the government do to me today? And how am I going to now live my life and have my freedoms when they're trying to take it away at every different angle? And the RAINS Act says, if an unelected bureaucrat does that, they have to come before Congress first. The elected people that are held accountable every two years were on the ballot. If it's a really good idea, present it in public view on C-SPAN. Can anybody tell me who the person is that came up with this rule? It's going to affect every American's life. No one can name who they are. Why don't you make them come? It's a great idea. They should be proud to present it in open view like this forum is right here and tell everybody what it's about. And if we vote it up, it becomes law. If we vote it down, the dumb idea dies. And yet that's not how it works, which is why we need things like the RAINS Act. But this unelected bureaucracy, these big government socialists that want to control every aspect of your life, we're sick and tired of it. We need to pass this bill. We need to pass the pistol brace bill. Tomorrow we bet need to pass Ms. Lesko's bill. We need to pass the RAINS Act and the Chevron deference bill. That's just this week. Every single week we're seeing this administration go after the rights of hardworking people and they're sick and they're tired of it. I'm glad this Republican majority is standing up for those families who are struggling and they're tired too. Let's get this done. Let's pass this bill. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from Florida reserves. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield my such time as I may consume. You know, <laughs> I keep listening to the speakers on the other side. First of all, the Consumer Product Safety Commission has not come up with any rule. 
Not only have they said they're, they're, said they're not going to ban gas stoves, but this bill doesn't adjust any rule that they've actually come up with with regard to gas stoves. It simply says that they cannot regulate gas stoves by looking at potential hazards that might kill people or hurt children. Now, when you go out, when, when, when I am as a consumer go to the store and buy something, most people think that if they buy a gas stove, that somebody in, at locally or at the state level or in Washington has looked at this thing to see whether it is hazardous and it's going to blow up and explode in my face. But what the Republicans are saying is, no, you can't do that. You can't look at this to see whether it's safe, whether it's going to explode, whether it's going to be hazardous to my kids. I, you can't do that. So you are under, you know, you're basically getting rid of what people expect. People expect, in my opinion, at least my constituents expect, then they go buy something that could potentially be hazardous and someone has reviewed it to see whether it is hazardous so it doesn't explode in my face and blow up my house. Now, what I'm hearing from my constituents when I went home this weekend is that they're sick and tired of the Republicans coming to the House floor with misinformation, misleading ideas, and they'd actually like us to do something to help them. Whether, whatever the issue is, to actually do something that's meaningful to them. And this bill is nothing more than some kind of scare tactic by House Republicans to mislead the American public. Last week, Republicans were unable to muster enough votes to move forward and debate this bill. No surprise, because the bill is terrible. At the time, a handful of my Republican colleagues acknowledged that, these, that this bill is just a messaging bill, messaging bill and has no chance of becoming law. One member of this body went so far as to say on the Republican side, is it really a loss that that we aren't passing anything? Okay, haven't we had enough bills like this one that put politics over policy and scare taxes over substance? This body should be focused on passing meaningful legislation that works to protect the health and safety of children, their families, consumers, not undermining the work of an expert agency like the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Don't keep coming to the floor and saying that this is about clean energy or this is about grills or something else. It's strictly about saying that this agency, which has the job to protect people from hazardous substances, cannot do that in the case of gas stoves. And I think it's pretty outrageous that you're saying that there isn't going to be a federal agency that can do that, because I know that when I go to the store, and when my, my residents, my constituents go to the store, they'd like to think that somebody's looking at this stuff to see whether it's going to explode in their face. And you're saying, no, that's not something that they can do. I, I reserve uh, the balance of my time. The gentleman from New Jersey reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Mr. Chairman, I yield two minutes to the distinguished gentleman from Michigan, uh, my good friend, Mr. Wahlberg. The gentleman is recognized. I thank the, the chair. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of H.R. 1615 and in support of our gas stoves. Across southern Michigan, people are bewildered including chefs in my district, and most importantly, my wife, by the attacks on gas stoves, and many can't wrap their heads around it. Here's the deal. A climate group with deep ties to the CCP published a questionable study on gas stoves. President Biden's climate czar and energy secretary have met with this group, and despite the group's deep ties to the CCP, American taxpayer dollars continue to be funneled to them. Shortly after publication of the study, a Consumer Product Safety Commission member said a gas stove ban was, quote, on the table. But let's be clear, the House is not going to stand by while the administration continues to restrict the freedoms of Americans, undermine energy security, and might make life even more costly for families. About 40% of Americans are utilizing gas stoves. And we're not going to restrict our own freedom because a group connected to the CCP would like us to. Natural gas is safe, it's reliable, it's affordable for millions of Americans. Natural gas makes America strong, resilient, and provides stability, and has been the key factor in cleaning up our environment unlike other nations. I urge my colleagues to vote yes to support our freedom, energy security, and a prosperous future. And I yield back. The gentleman from Florida reserves. I the reserve. gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. 
The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Yeah. Again, we're prepared to close, but if you have more I have speakers, no I'll additional reserve. speakers, then we'll reserve. The gentleman from New Jersey reserves. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. I have no additional speakers. Oh, then we're prepared to close. Okay. I would now yield to the gentleman, uh, gentleman from Illinois to close. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you. I'm prepared to uh, close, but I just want to say that there were a lot of things said that are really misinformation. No one is going to lose their gas stoves. This is not a plot to take that away. And I certainly encourage everyone to vote against this so that we can protect our children. We can have the Consumer Product Safety Commission alert us to problems that may occur and to keep all of us safer. That is the point of this bill. And with that, I yield back. The gentlewoman yields. And the yes, gentleman from uh, Florida is recognized. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as, as a distinguished gentleman said, 40% of Americans use gas stoves. They're very comfortable with their stoves. Let's not take it away from them. Now, you know, the other side says that we're not going to ban gas stoves. Well, let's put the American people at ease. Now, you know, we have seniors that are on limited incomes, and they love their, their gas stoves. How are they going to replace them? Where are they going to get the money? to replace these stoves. Uh, now, again, if we aren't going to ban gas stoves, let's put it in writing. Let's record the votes today. I tell you we're going to get bipartisan support for this particular bill. So I yield back. All time for general debate has expired.